find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't stopping yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail for the set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the pain. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 44. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter is a video producer up here in Pittsburgh with some groups that apparently everybody's having a show this weekend, but we'll talk about that uh, here later in the show. In the meantime, with me, as usual, he is the commentator for nwa inspire pro and writer for nwa ringside did i get all that right you did get all that right. i heard you, you on the wrap-up last night yes this was the first time and i'm excited I'm yes I, I, i'm very i'm like on my way back from buffalo and he's like well sorry never gets it right every week on the show i'm like oh <laughs> really now well you yeah. And we're here. Where am I from, Sork? That's He's, the next question. Oh, where are you from? You from the ghetto. No, you're from... <laughs> you're, wait, are we doing a complete biography? No, he's in San Antonio, Texas, down there. There we doing, go. Doing Texas things. I've been learning. I've learned so much about Texas and Austin in particular from The Daily Show last week. I'm very excited about that. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quiz you later. Uh, but in okay. the meantime, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. We got a great uh, guest lined up. But first, a uh, little bit of business. Uh, of course, you can check out this and all the other shows shows at wrestlingmayhemshow.com we got five of them going on if you like wrestling trivia i want to direct you guys to wrestlinggameshow.com uh fun thing that the guys are doing uh if you uh, take a listen to the last episode or two a uh, last one's really long i'll warn you uh but if you want to participate please drop a line to that email address at good times at wrestling and we'll direct you to the right people and see about hooking you up if you're free thursday nice to do that kind of thing uh it's a lot of fun also 412-206-wms0 along with that email address if you have any commentary or questions for any of our upcoming guests or, or suggestions or any indie wrestling you want to expose us to uh, please hit up, us up on any of those and of course you can look us up indie mayhem show on itunes stitcher spreaker youtube and iheart radio and also big thanks to uh, basic sickness at basic sickness.com for our intro and outro music ran into him in the mosh pit and icp show last week good to see he's doing well and still kicking <laughs> ass um and with that uh amen uh, oh also you can join us here live every tuesdays at 11 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com amen i understand with tonight's guest we have uh as far as the submission squad goes we have collected them all we have collected at least the at least the original set yes or the most prominent of sets yes uh, hopefully it, in mint condition i i call this the uh the um the quattro is that the like four, version of a trio if it's not four if it's four i don't know i don't know what the proper terminology is but we have completed the list of submission squad guests tonight uh joining us on the show uh he has you know traveled all across the independent wrestling world uh over the past couple of years uh you know competed for many different companies he's also the current uh absolute intense wrestling uh intense division champion uh, and as well as many other things, uh, joining us this week, uh, please welcome to the show, Davey Vega. Vega, how are you doing this evening? Hello, hello. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I'm pretty sure you just uh, compared us to uh, Pokemon when you said We did. Uh, <laughs> I, I was telling Sorg afterwards that after, since we now have you, Gary, Evan, and Pierre uh, on the show, that now we have to sort of get like the offshoot submission squad members You now. do have to forgive us. We do do a wrestling podcast earlier in the night, so it kind of all goes together. <laughs> uh, so uh, I guess the uh, best way to start it is sort of an a icebreaker question of the sort uh, that we like to this ask is professional uh, our guests, wrestling. Uh, each and every week, which is, uh, what is your uh, first ever memory of professional wrestling? Uh, first ever memory of professional wrestling, uh, I don't remember exactly the, uh, uh, the pay-per-view, um, but I was, uh, I think I was about seven years seven or eight years old and uh um my dad bought uh a, a wwf pay-per-view and uh the i, I want to say the main event was hogan versus macho man um and that was the very first uh that was the very first wrestling uh wrestling show that i've that i've ever seen in my life uh and then i i stopped watching it for a few years but then uh got hooked on it um after that and uh haven't stopped since awesome is there anything that sort of 
uh, from that time that you first started watching that sort of stuck out to you as as the thing that caught your attention besides besides like particular people like the things they were doing necessarily? Um, it, it was uh, I I think with like you you would think after um like watching like. Uh, like the Hogan and Macho Man, it's like, oh man, that's a great first match to watch. But it's like, like I said, like I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't like get hooked right away. Like it was like I saw that and I was like, oh yeah, that was kind of cool. And then I went about my business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like the the thing that really got me, uh, and this is really weird, uh, really weird match, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, the, the match that hooked me and I stayed hooked ever since was, uh, Stone Cold versus Savio Vega in the uh, Caribbean strap match. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't, it, I mean, it wasn't anything that they, that they did. It was just, uh, um, it was just interesting to see. And like, I remember that was the first match I watched in, uh, in a couple of years. I was like, Oh, this is kind of interesting. And then, uh, I just continued watching from there and it, it, uh, it grew from like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool to watch, and to man, I need to, I need to watch this every week. Awesome, definitely. And then from that, sort of making the transition to, you know, becoming a professional wrestler. Uh, did do you have what sort of guarded, you know, the thing in your mind that was like, I want to become a wrestler? Uh, is you know, and did you did you have sort of, a, I guess, an athletic background? Uh, uh, what sort of influenced you to uh, finally decide to uh, go to wrestling school? Well, uh, when I was, when I was growing up, um, you know, obviously I, I watched wrestling and that was like, that was my, um, uh, one of the, the main things that I did. It was, you know, if, if I was at school, I was, I was thinking about wrestling or talking about wrestling cause that was the big thing. Mm. Uh, or, uh, you know, if I was at home, I was, uh, uh, you know, trying to, I was looking up wrestling stats or re- looking up wrestling pictures on the internet or, or something like that. Uh, so it, it, it became, uh, it was, uh, it became a really big part of my life, um, around, I want to say probably about 10 years old or so. Uh, and, uh, um, the, uh, I, you know, growing up, I was, I was always in the sports. Um, I was, I, I did, I did baseball and basketball. Uh, and then as soon as wrestling came in, into the picture, uh, it was more of okay. Well, what do I want to do more? Do I want to do I want to watch or play baseball, or do I want to watch wrestling and uh, do this? And, and for a while, baseball won out, mm. uh, and I would just watch you know wrestling in my in my free time. And then uh, I hit I hit high school, uh, and I remember getting cut from my uh, high school basketball team in my first tryout, and it, like it really crushed me. Um, and, uh, I remember like, you know what, I'm, I, I, I don't need sports. Like, oh, I got wrestling. And, uh, I remember from then on, I was like, I'm going to be a wrestler. I think I was 15 at the time. And, uh, I was like, I'll go get trained when I'm old enough. And then, uh, I'll, I'll do that. And then it took me uh, a little bit longer than I wanted to, to get trained, but uh, I ended up getting trained and here I am. Awesome, definitely. And 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 what school did you sort of find, and how did you how did you go about uh, discovering uh, uh, discovering the school? Uh, well, uh, I remember when um, I was in high school, I had a buddy who turned me on to like uh, ECW and uh, a lot of the like indies um, in like two thousand, like uh, like ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one, mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, uh, he turned me on to a lot of indies and all that, uh, all that stuff. So when, um, I started watching that and he was like, Hey, there's actually a pretty cool local show. Uh, we should go check it out. Uh, and it was called gateway championship wrestling. And, uh, we went ahead and, uh, went out to one of their, uh, they had, it was called adult death and only. And it was more, <laughs> yeah, it was more of their, uh, their higher risk shows. And they did, uh, um, you know, they, they did like barbed wire and different, and different things. Like it was more of their risque shows. Mm. Uh, so we went to one of those shows and like, I remember like, man, these, I, th- this is probably going to suck. Like it's not the, it's not ECW or the fed or any of these other indie companies that I watch on, on VHS and, you know, screw this. So I ended up going just because it's like, Oh, it's wrestling. I don't have anything going on on a Saturday night. So I'll, I'll check it out. 
And uh, I just I remember having one of the fun funnest times of my life going to the, going to this wrestling show. And I was like, uh, I decided that I was going to get trained. And, and I ended up deciding that I didn't want to get trained there because uh, I wanted – around this time is when I, I discovered uh, Chikara and a couple other places. I was like, oh, okay, I, I got some of these other places mapped out. And I wa- really wanted to go train at Chikara, um, and I just wasn't able to make it happen. And uh, I started to uh, um, get a little bit older, and I was like, man, I'm – I'm way past like the, the age where I don't need a parent's permission to, uh, get trained. So, uh, I ended up going back to the, the gateway championship wrestling and getting trained by a man named Dingo who, um, he, he's been to, uh, he, he was kind of prominent in Texas for a while as, as part of the submission squad and, uh, starting to, starting to bust out a little bit in ring of honor and CZW before he decided that he was going to hang him up. Awesome. And, and sort of that process of, of becoming a professional wrestler, how did you take this sort of the actual training? Uh, it's funny. Um, I went into training, uh, with quite a bit of knowledge only because my buddy that introduced me to wrestling had went and gotten trained before I did. Hmm. Uh, and he was the kind of guy I was like, Oh, Hey, let's, let's, uh, let's work on some stuff. And, uh, I'm not afraid to admit it. I, I, I used to backyard, uh, with a lot of my friends, but you know, it, to me, it was like, you know, flag football in the front yard with your buddies. So, yeah. um, that, that, that's how, that's how wrestling was for me. So, um, he, he, he kept up showing all of us like what to do and, all that stuff. And, uh, I, I knew there was more to it than just what he was showing us. So I was like, I should eventually, you know, I got to the point where, where I was like, well, do I just want to have fun in my backyard with my friends or do I want to seriously consider, uh, pursuing this? And, uh, I made the decision to go get trained, uh, which, you know, obviously was a good decision because, um, there was, a, there was a lot more than what I was being shown. Um, and, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, at this point I'm, I'm pretty decently successful. So it, it's worked out in my favor in some points. Awesome. Definitely. Um, uh, talk, going into sort of your career now and sort of your successes, uh, and we actually, I've talked about this with, I think each of the squad members, uh, because obviously, uh, me being from Texas, the, the, I got to see you since you guys predominantly are in, in the Midwest. Uh, when you guys come down to Texas, but particularly you, you've been traveling, you know, uh, and you know, all over the Midwest, Texas. I know you just did Canada last weekend, you know, all, all over the, uh, you know, the North America. Uh, uh, what's it like sort of, you know, traveling for those long hours and, 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 and was it something that was sort of taught to you, I guess, in a sense of like, Hey, you know, going out and traveling. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I will say this, the, the Texas trips, that was the first like out of town booking that I ever took, mm-hmm. um, with, was with the squad going to ACW. Um, and I remember just sitting in the car the whole time. I'm like, Holy shit. When is this going to end? <laughs> uh, like, uh, you know, I, I got a taste for it. And then like, I just kept traveling after that. And like, I, uh, I hung on to ACW, um, for a very long time. Uh, and I will say that those Texas trips are what prepared me for a lot of the trips that I've taken, uh, now. Um, because, uh, you know, I think going to, from St. Louis to Austin is roughly about 14 to 15 hours, Mm. uh, give or take. And, uh, you know, anything less than that, you know, anything less than like even going to Dallas is like, I think 10 and a half, 11. Yeah. And any, anything less than that is just a cakewalk for me now. Um, and people are like, Oh man, I can't believe you drove six hours or whatever. And I'm like, man, that's like, that, that's a, that's a walk in the park for me. Like (laughs) going to, uh, you know, if you go to Austin or San Antonio, that's anywhere from 14 to 17 hours. So, um, and, and it's really cool. Cause like, uh, you know, for, a, for a long time, people are like, um, people will ask us about traveling and, you know, cause everyone knew like, Oh, it's mission squad. They just go everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just get in the car and they go. 
Um, and, uh, that, that's, you know, I'm not, that, that's not like some, you know, some secret or, uh, you know, anything in wrestling. Like if you, if you want to get booked, you need to get in the car and you just need to go. Um, that's, that's the big secret behind wrestling. So anybody that's listening, um, but, uh, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, they just get in the car and they go and they're, they're, they're crazy. And like a lot of, like, uh, a lot of people will come up to us like veterans, uh, you know, people that have been to WWE and, you know, you know, uh, WCW and Ring of Honor and all that other stuff, people that we met through our travels. And like, they're like, you boys are doing it right. Um, you guys are getting in the car and you're traveling long hours. That's the way it should be. And that's the way, you know, that's the way every, everybody should be doing it. And, it's it's really cool to to know that uh you know that's that's still respected these days so um as far as like traveling the long hours like the texas trip has definitely texas trips have definitely um hardened me to uh the traveling process uh and uh like my trip last weekend to canada was I think I drove, I drove six hours to Indiana, met up with somebody, drove another three to Cleveland, met up with two other guys and then drove another four to Canada mm. and then and did the same thing on the way back. And it was, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was like, you know, that's, that's nothing to me now. So, right. you know, like I said, I just get in the car and I go and people seem to respect that. And it, it uh, you know, it, it definitely has opened up a lot more uh, booking opportunities for me. Uh, the fact that I just get in the car and I go. So Awesome. Definitely. Uh, and to talk about uh, some of your more recent successes, uh, because uh, actually since the last time we've talked to the submission squad, any of the submission Squad members, uh, we haven't gotten, it was been before since one of your biggest recent successes, a part of uh Chikara King of trios. Uh, uh, you guys uh, finally, after all this time, got your big uh, uh, King of trios match. Uh, you're four on four against the uh, the gentlemen's club, uh, uh, and obviously for those that uh, you know, a lot of people know the story of this this submission squad and Shakara and stuff like that. Uh, you know, what was it like? You know, finally getting that opportunity. Uh yeah, the uh, we're the uh, king of quattros now. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, the the whole storyline um, was done very well. Obviously, with like the uh, you know. The, the fact that, you know, back in 2009, when we didn't have the greatest of matches um, at the King of Trios, uh, and then, you know, over the years, you just, you know, being constantly, uh, being constantly berated or, or, or talked bad about because of um, one opportunity that uh, didn't go quite well for us. And then eventually it got to the point where, um, you know, we had this other opportunity to come back and, uh, you know, the, the story, we told the story through the submission impossible, uh, YouTube videos and they, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it built up to, um, you know, people thought we were actually going to be in the King of Trios last year. Uh, and then, you know, we, we got stuck on the side of the road and didn't make it. And then, uh, you know, we built it up further. And, um, the, the fact that we, we had the opportunity to do all that, um, was, was amazing. Well, it, it was a very long and arduous process, but, uh, the fact that we were able to finally like be at, uh, King of Trios and have a match and which a match that some people are saying was match of the weekend, mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it's just like, it's mind blowing. Like we could go from having the worst, what people say is the worst match in Jakarta history to having the best match of the weekend at King of Trio 20, uh, 2014. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's an awesome feeling. And it's, you know, it's a lot, there was a lot of hard work put in, um, on our end, um, to get there, to get back there. And, um, you know, it was that, that first time we were at King of Trios, it was, it was something that was, had been on our mind for years. So, uh, we wanted to go out there and make an impression. And then I, I think we did exactly that. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, so going, um, so, so more successes, your successes too, as, as a singles competitor, 
Uh, I know you've gotten a chance to break out a lot uh, uh, during the past couple of years, get to wrestle a lot of really different people. Uh, uh, some of them more predominantly for, I know, uh, St. Louis Anarchy, you've got to wrestle a lot of uh, Ring of Honor talents, uh, some bigger name guys. Uh, is there anyone that sort of stuck out to you as, as someone that you really loved, you know, getting the opportunity to get in the ring with? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I get, a, it's really awesome for me because I get a lot of opportunities, um, you know, in Anarchy and, and some of the other places that I work, I get a lot of awesome opportunities and like, I'm so grateful for it all. Cause, um, you know, it, I, it, it's funny because I was actually one of my, one of my buddies called me, <laughs> called, uh, myself and him, uh, indie darlings. <laughs> and it's, it's just so weird to like hear that it's like man i was watching you know czw and ring of honor and seeing like alex shelley and jimmy jacobs you know when they were still young and in the in uh in the process of being indie darlings because and then becoming like huge huge wrestlers mm. uh, so it's really it's really kind of like really weird for me to be considered an indie darling at this point but it was kind of cool at the same time um but like yeah i get i get a ton of opportunities and i think um oh man i i really can't it's hard to really choose one but if i had to like i really looked up to uh um to chris hero for the longest time mm. uh, leading up to our match back in may and uh it was uh, you know, Pierre has told me time and time again since May, like that was the best match that he's seen me in. Um, and, and maybe it was something because like I grew up watching it, like, you know, in high school I watched him and this is one of the, one of the guys that I like, sort of modeled myself after. Um, and maybe I had something to prove, but, uh, that, that definitely, I think, uh, I had it in a different gear that night. And, uh, that was definitely one of my, uh, one of my best experiences wrestling a guy um, that uh, um, that has that kind of name value on the indie scene. Mm. Uh, and then uh, the other one uh, I've actually faced him multiple times at this point, but uh, I didn't like uh, Davy Richards was uh, he's, he's a, he was the very first guy, like the very first name that I ever wrestled. Um, and I can't say I, I, there's so many great things that I could say about him. He's, he's definitely like the wrestler that you see today is because of Davey Richards. Mm -hmm. Um, he is, he is the main reason that I have, I've changed my work ethic and, uh, I wrestle the way that I do. And that like some of the stuff that you see, like that's, that's a large influence from, uh, from Davey Richards. Definitely. Awesome. Very cool. Um, now to talk about you mentioned Chris Hero and 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 uh, some would say sort of that that happenings with Chris Hero uh, happened uh, for I know a company that you'll be working for this weekend uh, a company that that I am a part of as well uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, you're coming in for Fun 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 Fest weekend uh, uh, this coming weekend uh, uh, and we last saw you in Inspire Pro a couple months ago and and you you kind of turned a different leaf or a different attitude i guess is is the best way to put it uh, i know uh you'll be facing uh jojo bravo on the on the final day of that weekend uh in a bit of a grudge match of sorts uh uh, uh as far as the stuff you've been doing in inspire pro uh, uh how do you you know sort of this change of attitude where do you think it, it all comes from well uh you know as as far, i i travel a lot and uh i see um, you know, I see a lot of people, uh, that are really working hard, um, to try to be, uh, be something in wrestling. Uh, and, and then I see other people that are like, you know, just weekend, you know, weekend warriors. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and for a long time there, like I, I felt that Jojo had, um, the, you know, he had that, uh, he had that, that passion. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that he doesn't have passion for wrestling. I'm not saying that weekend warriors don't have passion for wrestling. Um, but people that, you know, day in and day out work towards a wrestling goal. 
um, the, the, their passion is a little, a little bit different. And I thought Jojo had that at one point and, uh, um, now I don't, I don't, I don't think so, so much. So, uh, um, as far as my, uh, my attitude change, um, I had an opportunity to, um, put Jojo in his place and, uh, I went ahead and did it. And, uh, you know, if, uh, I know he's, he, I know he's been wanting to get his hands on me for, uh, you know, since, since June. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to happen this weekend at fun fest and, uh, he gets an opportunity to shut me up and prove me wrong. Definitely. And we'll, we'll definitely have to see, uh, uh, how that all turns out. Uh, so the, one of the final questions I do want to ask, uh, and it's the sort of the question we ask all of our guests, uh, and they, uh, take it in very different directions. Uh, you've, Feel free to take it in any which way uh, uh, your your brain decides to take it. But uh, the question we have is, uh, in your opinion, what is the best thing about uh, independent wrestling, and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? Uh, the best thing about uh, independent wrestling um, is the the freedom and the creativity and uh, just. Uh, you know, the reactions that you can get from people and the emotions that you can, you can pull out of people. Like, I know that's a whole lot of answers, but, um, just all of that combined in, into one, like, it, I, I know it's kind of cliche to say, but like, you know, wrestling, like in wrestling, like, uh, that ring, that canvas, that is, that is our canvas to paint on. And like, um, wrestling is, uh, you know, you, you're out there and you're trying to pull emotions out of people and, uh, you know, trying to be creative and you're trying to get that, um, you're trying to get that reaction because that reaction is your, that reaction for wrestlers is their high. Um, the wrestling is their drug and that reaction is their high. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that is definitely, in my opinion, the, uh, the best thing about independent wrestling, uh, the worst thing about independent wrestling is the politics, the backstabbing and just the overall shitty, shitty people, um, you run into on a weekend to weekend basis, or even, uh, even during the week, the some of the people that you, that, that you train with, like it's, uh, and it's not, you know, some of it is not even like really cutthroat. It's just like some of the shit that you hear, uh, like the he said, she said stuff. Um, it just gets out, it, it gets out of hand in my opinion. And like, we're, you know, you're, you're supposed to be out there, you know, with each other, uh, and you have each other's lives in your, in your hands, but like, you know, at, at least they're professional enough to do that. But then you have like, you know, like the backstabbing and the politics and just, uh, it, it's not needed in my opinion. There's, you know, there's not a whole lot of like nice people, uh, in wrestling. And I, and, and honestly, I can see why, like, um, I'm one of the, I'm one of the nicest people that you'll ever meet in wrestling. And, uh, even from time to time, I'm like, man, fuck these people. Like, sorry, excuse my language, but. Oh, oh uh, no, no problem. <laughs> there's no, there's, we, we are cool, totally cool with any, any expletives. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, like, I'm just like, man, F these people, man. Like I, they, they, they just don't get it. Uh, you know, you don't treat, I, cause I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I was raised to treat people how you want to be treated. And, uh, you know, I, I don't just because I'm a wrestler doesn't mean I don't treat people that way. Like if I want to be treated with respect and like dignity, I, you know, I, I don't talk down to people. I don't, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't try to insult anybody's intelligence. I don't make fun of somebody that I don't know. Uh, and I, you know, I don't go around, uh, you know, hitting on some dude's wife trying to sleep with her backstage. Like I, it's stuff like, it's just stuff like that. Like just, uh, that isn't really needed in wrestling. Um, but it's there and it's so prominent. Um, it kind it, it's kind of a downer, really. Uh, and that is definitely the the worst part about wrestling, and and it's just 
it, it, it could change. Uh, it, it definitely, it definitely could change. Um, will it ever change? Probably not. But um, that, that in my opinion is the worst aspect about independent wrestling. Awesome. Definitely. And definitely agree. Um, so uh, just to close out, uh, if, if people listening to the show want to find you uh, either on social media or on any uh, upcoming events that you may be on, uh, uh, please uh, feel free to plug away. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Davey Vega 85. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, just keywords, Davey Vega. I'm the only one on Facebook that says Davey Vega. Uh, <laughs> if any promoters or bookers want to get in contact with me, they can do so through there or, uh, through my email at Davey Vega 85 at gmail.com. Uh, and this weekend you can find me, uh, Friday at AAW in Marionette Park, uh, Illinois, uh, and then Saturday and Sunday in Austin, Texas for Inspire Pro Wrestling at the Fun 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 Fest. Awesome, definitely. And then uh, if you haven't heard Davey Vega before, uh, go go check him out if, you're, if he's in your area because he will, like you said, he will definitely, you know, put on a show and, and, and do some really amazing stuff. So thank you very much, Davey, for joining us. And, uh, I believe uh, me and Sorg are now going to dive into uh, some of the world of independent wrestling. Thanks, Eamon. And, and thanks again to uh, David Vega for a really awesome interview. I was really enjoying uh, listening to that one. Uh, Eamon, we got a lot of wrestling going on, I know, uh, ourselves in our own areas uh, this weekend. But first, I want to talk about something like a lot of this happening uh, kind of broader. And I know we talk about like Ring of Honor is definitely kind of kind of a nationally-ish uh, 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 thing that's out there. And there's another one that's kind of national-ish uh, with Lucha Underground. Uh, now, they're showing on the El Rey Network, which uh, I discovered apparently is only on Dish Network. And I think, or Dish T, or I'm sorry, Direct TV, I believe. And I think they said Time Warner Cable. So not okay. everybody's getting this just yet. Um, yeah. And uh, well, well, first, for, first of all, uh, the first episodes out there. I don't even know if you get it in the cable where you're at. I don't even know if you. Uh, I, I don't. I don't believe I get all right, but I, I do get to check uh, check out the first episode through uh, mm-hmm. through online means. You so. can definitely find it online, and I gotta say, you know, this isn't everywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think if you find it. That's okay because you probably don't have an option otherwise. Uh, but in the mm-hmm. meantime, if you go to go look up Lucha Underground, you get to their site, you get to their YouTube, you can check out some of the stuff. Um, but um, so I'm wondering, what are your impressions of this new uh, television property? Um, well, well, I think the biggest thing that you guys discussed on the Wrestling Mayhem show too about this topic was the the idea that it that it is very very different uh, production wise look. Uh, feel uh, it's a very different product and, and I think that's so needed in professional wrestling it's just something that's different something that you know is away from the norm which I I, I do I do enjoy um, and I do love the the ta- they seem to be bringing in some really great talent uh, former uh, you know WWE guys obviously there's the rumor going around that Alberto Del Rio may sign soon uh, which would be really really great stuff uh uh, but you have a lot of like former guys like, like Ezekiel Jackson's on there, I believe. Uh, former NXT star Maxine is on there. Uh, there there's um, some really cool talent, John Morrison as well uh, in the main event. And I, I will correct. Uh, I think Mad Mike on the Wrestling Mayhem show mentioned that it was Puma from TNA. Uh, actually, completely different Puma. Uh, this is Prince Puma, who is a a, a Lucha Underground uh, 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 debut character that's actually a ricochet underneath a mask. Hmm. Uh, so obvious, you know, that, and John Morrison versus Ricochet. I mean, that's, you know, I'll sure. take that any day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Um, and blue demon junior Chavo Guerrero, like there's a lot of really good stuff there. Um, I really love the, the backstage vignettes that are shot very much like a movie or, oh, and, and they, they create a certain feel to, I really love the, um, uh, the, uh, the sort of vignette, I guess, is the best way to still put it. Uh, they they did for a uh, sexy star mm-hmm. to, as her like introduction because I think it, I thought it told a really good story. Um, I, I think the, that's the storytelling is going to be phenomenal. I feel in Lucha Underground because of you know stuff that allows them to go further than what a regular wrestling program can do. Um, uh, I I think that's amazing. My only downside, and and this is could 
quite possibly not be a downside for other people that are listening to this. Um, but for me personally, I I think it's just any kind of studio wrestling. Um, I can never fully get into it mm-hmm. just from the fact that I, I feel like I'm the kind of person where I need either a live crowd reaction or I need like, even if it's like a DVD or something, like a crowd reaction as it's happening. You know what I mean? Like I, and I'm not, you know, I'm sure, you know, you know, the crowds were hot for those events and, and, and it seems like it, but you know, you, there's clearly some, you know, editing that they do mm-hmm. to emphasize, Hey, the crowd's into this or the crowd's into that. And it's like, you know, I, I it kind of ruins that genuine crowd feel which is something that I think for me personally is something that I need in wrestling. Um, but if, if you don't care about that kind of stuff, like that's, this is for you. Like this stuff is really for you. But like I said, I'm, I'm still interested in it because I think the storytelling is going to be phenomenal. I, I really do think it's going to go past, you know, what you would normally expect. Uh, you, we had a uh, Lucha Libre USA not too long ago, I believe. And as much as that, you know, they tried something somewhat different by bringing Lucha to America, they very much did it in an American style. And for a, you know, mainstream WWE audience. What I would have done, you know, and... It's Lucha on the ground is really taking things to a different level, and I and I, and I appreciate that. Um, so I would say t- check it out. The, the, I would not discourage anyone from checking out, especially the first episode, because the first episode is just so stacked with uh, great wrestling, great storytelling, production value. I highly encourage people to check it out. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I found myself like you mentioned the Lucha USA, and I'm like, wait, well, there was another one that that came up came about, and I'm just like, what happened to it? Um, and yeah, I'm pulling up the site and I'm kind of looking at some of the highlight video they have on the front of their site. And again, super crazy Shane Helms, you know, uh, guys yeah. like that. You know, it was a different line of people they, they got into it. Um, the storytelling was kind of um, traditional storytelling that it you was. think of an, as an American wrestling show, as opposed to, you know, the stuff that Lucha Underground is doing, which is, I think, I personally think very different. It didn't feel different enough. Mm-hmm. I think was the thing. It, it felt like it did feel like if TNA did a, you know, what we, we experienced how what TNA would do if they did an Indian wrestling show, yeah. um, it with uh, Rinka King, wasn't it? Yeah, Lucha, uh, Lucha, yeah, Lucha Libre USA, I guess is what it's known as. Uh, was very. I would compare it a lot more to like Rinka King and Lucha Underground is very different than, than, from both of those. You know, it, it's I I couldn't really compare the two. Yeah, I, you know, with this I didn't, I didn't, I did not know. Uh, uh, Lucha Libre USA is actually on Hulu. Is it? Yeah, so uh, you could go back and watch. Looks like they got twenty episodes. I imagine that's all they did. Um, I remember going to one of their live events once when yeah. they, uh, they ha- they would do them in like ball fields, like uh, you know minor league ball fields. Um, yeah, so it, it's 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 you know it, it was an attempt at that at that you know, bringing that style to America. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Lucha Underground is going to create something that is something that's going to be, I think, a bit more lasting. I, I really oh, go. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really look at this as maybe not to the extreme, but we, we always bring up Chikara as a true alternative. You know, mm-hmm. it's something different. You know, and we talked about it uh, with our interview with Davey Vega here. Um, but, it is, uh, it's got a different feel. It's got a different flavor. It's got a different kind of storytelling. And I feel like, uh, you know, I, I've often, I, I think I mentioned in the other show on Wrestling Mayhem show, like this uh, feels like Wrestling Society X, but with better production and a better concept, right? Mm-hmm. That it's studio wrestling that's very packaged, you know, that kind of idea. You, you really kind of spoke to that. But I think it's also um, that you know, uh, as Shakar is the indie wrestling, maybe this is to televised wrestling. You and know? I think um, in sort of the contrast to Chikara, I think, because one of the things I think about Chikara a lot is, and I love Chikara to death, um, I think, and we talked about it sort of with Bryce, is that, that um, 
you know, Chikara has their style and they know that there is a fan base that will enjoy their style and they don't necessarily worry about the people that wouldn't be into that kind of style. Mm-hmm. Like there are people that are not going to like Chikara and just will never like Chikara. And there's some people they, are not going to like Lucha Underground because they're going to be like, uh, don't get the Mexican wrestling. They, you know? Yeah, I, I, and very true. I think Lucha Underground, though, is kind of going in two different directions as far as the audiences go. Because I think they have a very mainstream appeal mm-hmm. while also appealing to their sort of independent, uh, not to, you know, do a play on words, but a very underground audience. Um, you know, they, they, I think, are reaching for both of those markets and I think could be very successful in gaining both of those markets. Um, that, that's the only thing I would say would be different from Chikara would, in the sense that they are trying to maybe reach out to some different places. And like you said, there are going to be people that are not going to watch it because they don't want to watch Lucha really great. Or maybe they're like me and they're not going to watch it because it's in studio or whatever. But they, it, they are creating a, a product that I think people are going to enjoy. Certainly. Certainly. All right. With that, the other announcement, and I know you got, you got, you, you, you you kind of poked at me because I talked about New Japan <laughs> wrestling without you on the other I, show. I, I, so I set, you big... gave me, you set me straight between shows. So I'm going to let you present. What is Global Global Force Wrestling? I had a press release. So yeah, um, Global Force Wrestling, which is Jeff Jarrett's uh, new organization, and I call it an organization because it's not really necessary. It doesn't seem like it's necessarily going to be a wrestling company. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be kind of very similar. A lot of people are the closest thing they can compare it to is that they compare it to the NWA in that it's a collection of promotions under one sort of media bubble, I guess is the best way to kind of put it. Um, I know they're working with, I think, AAA. It's either AAA or CMLL. um, And now New Japan and and a couple others. Um, So uh, the big announcement that they made is that they are um, taking New Japan's uh, Wrestle Kingdom event, which is their January 4th um, event from the Tokyo Dome, which is probably one of their biggest drawing events, uh, you know, one of their most uh, highly anticipated events into the build, basically the main event, and uh, very similar to the Royal Rumble builds from the G1 climax on to January 4th. So it's kind of like, you know, it's very, very, you know, similar. Um, it's very, very interesting. Um, but yeah, and now they're going to be on pay per view in America. There's no, I, don't, I, I didn't get to read any like the real concrete details about what will be happening. Um, my opinion of it was, I don't know if it's necessarily too big of an announcement from the fact that you can already see New Japan pay-per-views on pay-per-view. Okay, so that's not they, even... Okay. Not not on, like, your pay-per-view providers, but um, they are doing iPay-per-views off of Ustream, mm-hmm. which is, for them, and I say iPay-per-views, we aren't talking about those iPay-per-views that have been happening for the past couple of years where there's feeds or feeds or iffy or whatever. They are proper. They are very high quality, you know, zero issue uh, pay-per-views that uh, are done through Ustream. They're, they're not doing them on a shoestring budget like most of these wrestling companies are. Right. Because, I mean, people need to think that, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling, like, I say these are the WWE of, of Japan, and then I know that's a bit ironic since WWE is a global company, but they are because they, they are the highest drawing company in Japan. There's nobody that, that you know even comes close in Japan to matching uh, what New Japan does. Um, they, and you know in the past couple of years, they've grown a lot of popularity in America, uh, and they've really tapped into that. Uh, popularity in America uh, with stuff like the Bullet Club, uh, which is very much like an NWO style. It's a, it's very American style story. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Says NWO was taken from a Jap- Japanese storyline, and now it's back under the Bullet Club. Right, but I, and, but the way they do they the way they execute the Bullet Club is very much how the American sort of big stable of renegade kind of guys. You know they they sort of do, which is not common for New Japan. Um, it, 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 it's very away from the norm. But a lot of people say that the pushing of that has been to appeal to their new American audience, mm-hmm. uh, since New Japan is more popular in America than ever. Um, and and that's not to say they were never popular, you know, in America. Because a lot of familiar uh, faces here. Wow, I'm looking at Alex Shelley. I'm looking at Bobby Fish. Um, you know, yeah, Bob. 
but uh, they've been working with Ring of Honor, obviously, lately. Yeah. Uh, the question is, I don't know if Ring of Honor guys will be able to appear on Wrestle Kingdom since it's going to be on pay per view. True. So True. I, I I don't know uh, how that will go down, but um, but they like this is a company like people think like New Japan for wrestling isn't this like indie wrestling company sort of of Japan. Like they've been going since 1972. Mm-hmm. Like they've been you know delivering. You know they they had a bit. Uh, I think it was uh when you know you would see remember when you sort of see like the iwgp like titles on like tna shows where, like where i think like kurt angle held it held the heavyweight title at one yeah. point but, yeah. but, that, but it was a it was still a big like kurt angle was held had the iwgp heavyweight title and was wrestling you know guy you know and i think lost it or uh he beat yeah or he beat brock lesnar for it like that's you know in in what like 2006 or 2007 like like that's huge and and you know i think the the one thing with these global force wrestling putting new japan on pay-per-view is that uh from what it seems they may be doing um it in english commentary which i think would is the one benefit in the fact that it would reach that audience of people that are kind of like well i'm not going to watch japanese wrestling because I can't understand what they're saying. Um, which which, is, a, which is a valid argument for the it, little more casual wrestling fan. It, right? it is a very valid argument. I do think particularly New Japan, maybe besides like the Bullet Club stuff, but like New Japan's style of wrestling doesn't really, you know, necessitate you having to, you know, understand what they're saying. Um, at this, I think, but there's also, I think a lot of really cool alternative. There's a person that, um, uh, there's actually a Twitter account. I don't know the actual name of the Twitter account, but like for all the big New Japan events, um, if anyone like cuts a promo in Japanese, they'll basically tr- uh, translate the promo, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, so there's ways to sort of you know understand it and and really you know to follow it closely. I think, but it's going to be for those people that are like, well, I'm not, you know. The the ones that are that Ted are like, no, I refuse to watch New Japan, and then this is the reason why. But um, I I think it, it's very it it goes for what Global Force Wrestling has been lately, which is we don't really under, know exactly how it's going to go because we don't understand the full picture of mm-hmm. what it actually is. Yeah, you know. Uh, people thought it was a wrestling company, and now it's just like this collaboration of companies. And, and they're not really clarifying. All yeah, we know are. is we can they're get really pictures very, of very, uh, Karen and and Jeff. Yeah, they, at, I, on their website and T-shirts that may or may not be real. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but so I don't know. Um, I, I I think if it gets more people watching New Japan Pro Wrestling, that's always a good thing. I mean, you know. I, I want to talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling so bad, and I would love to have people to talk about it with. Uh, Eamon needs friends. As soon as he's gonna, he's gonna start the New Japan Mayhem show. Yes, and, yes. Uh, um, but you know, if it gives people the chance to watch it, or if this makes you, it's accessibility. It's again, it's like it's on pay per view versus an eye pay per view. There's still a difference. Like we talk about this a cord cutting, but there's still a difference between I can click my remote and watch it, hopefully in English. I can't see them putting on pay per view and not giving it English. I really don't, yeah. or subtitles or something. But it's live, and I'm so that would be weird. beyond Japanese time. Yeah, because that's how they do the the you know high uh, pay per views as well. So, but I'm... but yeah, I, I I'm I'm intrigued, but until more information sort of comes about with it, then I, I I'm not I'm not really sure necessarily. Awesome. Well, at that point. Uh, let's look into what's coming up here, uh, here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we have, uh, well, not in Pittsburgh, but we have two shows in the Western PA area broadly. <laughs> uh, of course this Saturday going all the way up the Clearfield PA, uh, with my friends over at the international wrestling cartel for combat in Clearfield seven. Mm. You can go check that out. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff. Colin Delaney, RJ City against Dalton Castle and Keith Hot. A few friends of the show in that lineup. Uh, of course, Andrew Palace against Joseph Brooks. Asylum, John McChesney, uh, and uh, a Kiss My Muscles match. Friends of the show, Chess Flexor and Jimmy DeMarco. 
Uh, we've had rather uh, revealing interviews with them in the past, so you can imagine how that. You that's don't going. say. Yeah, yeah. There were all kinds of facades on there. Uh, all kinds of uh, uh, people involved. So it'd be fun to see that. A couple of new faces looks like lined up on that site as well. Uh, so that's all the way up in Clearfield, PA. Also in, in conjunction, of course, they're they're mentioning. Uh, well, Matt Hardy's going to be in town for winter takes all coming up in December. Uh, but there's a seminar series going on advertised here on the you know sides of the site here at IWCWrestling.com. Uh, this week, Vince Russo uh, is actually doing one and, and uh, another one with Matt Hardy. This is for wrestlers. I mean, this is for people in the business, of course, if you're into that. Uh, go check out more information at IWCWrestling.com. November 7th for Vince, Vince, Vince Russo and December 11th for Matt Hardy. Um, I will be around for some of the Vince Russo stuff. Um, <laughs> I, he's also going to be doing some stuff with uh, Chair Shot Reality and uh, and a special meet and greet uh, You know, for that. Uh, if you go to pyroandballyhoo.com slash Pittsburgh, off the top of my head, I believe that's the, doc- that's the address to find information. Um, a lot of the tickets are sold out for that third Thursday night event, uh, but you know, but there there should be uh, some something left there. Um, also, rwalive.com, the big show. They are back at the California uh, University, Cal U in uh, California, PA. The big convocation center down there, including uh, Shane Helms is going to be there. Uh, Shane Douglas is going to be here. A lot of Shanes. Uh, Sanjay Dutt is going to be there. Of course, you know, Jesse Bell and all the, all the people that, you know, we usually talk about with RWA, including uh, Sarah Feeney, who uh, congratulations, won the women's title, the last RWA show. Um, and, and, and the whole crew, uh, Ryan, Ryan Mitchell's Ryan Edmonds, uh, Chris Taylor, all of them go check that out. RWA live.com. It's a, it's a support the troops. Um, I believe, uh, anybody with a military ID gets in the show free and proceeds go to help the nine 11, uh, support the troops fund. Uh, so really good cause. They had a great time there be- before at, at a good show. Um, um, and a lot of people show up for that and, uh, they didn't have any names. They didn't have Shane Helms. They didn't have hurricane. They didn't have Shane Douglas. It was all just their crew. And that was really cool to see them pull that off. And, and I can't wait to see, uh, what they do with this one. So we'll have lots to talk about here from the Pittsburgh area. Uh, <laughs> and of course you got fun, fun, fun fest. Oh my God. This weekend is going to be the wildest thing I've ever participated in. Uh, yes, it's, uh, we mentioned it a couple times before, but Inspire Pro Wrestling down here in Austin, Texas, will be participating in the uh, annual Fun 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 Fest uh, Festival uh, in Austin, Texas, downtown uh, at Auditorium Shores. Uh, we're sharing the same venue with the likes of Judas Priest, uh, Wiz Khalifa, Nas, uh, Modest Mouse, uh, uh, King Diamond, uh, uh, so many and so many others. Uh, com- comedians like Fred Armisen. Uh, Jonah Ray, uh, yeah, Jonah Ray, uh, who's from At Midnight, or not, I, he's from The Nerdist. I know Bobby likes him. And I told Bobby, hey, this is guy I think you know, that's gonna be here. Um, but it's, it's some of the best in music and in comedy. Uh, there's food, uh, there's, uh, uh, skating. Like, I think that our, um, our wrestling ring is actually gonna be positioned near like the giant, like, skate park sort of thing that they have set up. Um, it's it's gonna be really fun and, and really exciting and it's cool to be able to sort of you know put our stuff in front of a, a you know ex- in front of a larger audience and and hopefully you know get our name out there a bit more and, and make some new fans and 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 you know I, I think that's the end goal but all all the end goal as the title suggests is for us to have some fun 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 uh, which we will be doing uh, that and is also Friday. and also for Eamon the crowd surf during Judas Priest. Uh, yes, I'm yes. going to do things this weekend that I probably have never done before. Oh, and, and I can't I, wait for the stories. Oh, brother. Um, this is adult life and it, it's weird. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to check out Inspire Pro Wrestling sets uh, during Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is the 7th through the 9th, uh, we are, uh, all of our sets are at 1 p.m. Uh, near the black stage, uh, between the black stage and the skate uh, skate park. Um, like I said, all our sets are at 1 p.m. Uh, we have a lot of really good, good matches on. We have a Loser Leaves Inspire Pro match on day two to, to end uh, a big feud, that, feud that's been going on uh, between the Hollywood Knives. Uh, Davey Vega, who we had on, is, is facing JoJo Bravo in the main event of the evening. 
Uh, there's a lot of great talented guys uh, that are going to be wrestling that weekend. Uh, and it's going to be crazy. It's, it's going to be some really cool stuff. Um, and like I said, hopefully next week I will report to you with all that happened if I'm alive. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this should be some fun stuff. Uh, you can go to inspireprowrestling.com for the full lineup, and you can also go to funfunfunfest.com uh, for your tickets and, and uh, more scheduling information and stuff like that. Uh, you can still get your tickets uh, now, so, you know, up till the day of the show. So go check it out, uh, and, and then we hope to see you there. Awesome. Uh, that's, that's sort of the big stuff that's happening for us. The only uh, other shows that are happening that I do want to mention is that uh, CZW and WSU are doing another double header event. Uh, uh, this weekend on the 8th. Uh, you know, they've been doing some really cool stuff over there uh, in the New Jersey area uh, and on high pay per view through uh, our, our video. So uh, go support them, uh, czwrestling.com, for more information and the full lineup. Uh, there should be some really cool stuff going on uh, if you're in that area. So go check them out. Awesome. So, well, Eamon, I think that ties it up for the uh, indie news. We thought we covered a lot. Cover a lot. Thanks, we covered a lot. <laughs> thanks, Davey Vega, for joining us. Go check him out. Davey Vega 85, I believe, was that Twitter. Or just look up Davey Vega on the Facebooks. Tell him to say hi. Tell him you enjoyed his interview here on the Indie Mayhem show. <laughs> and, uh, and now we've collected all the submission squads. Uh, thanks, uh, Basic Sickness, for the outro music. BasicSickness.com. You can join us here live Tuesday nights about 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central. For the Amons out there. And uh, you can also hop on to WrestlingMayhemShow.com to check out this and other shows. And all our past interviews that we've had, we've had uh, 44 of them. We'll have 50 interviews before <laughs> the year is out. Ooh, buddy. 50 interviews. We've talked to 50 different people, because I don't think we've had any overlap. Uh, we're scheduled to, uh, if I catch up with them, we get enough time. We're going to talk to Asylum, uh, who popped up. I think he was Johnny Adventure or something in that NXT uh, Performance <laughs> Center try out so uh, i'm hoping to get some uh, you know pick his brain about how that experience was and he's been doing some awesome stuff in iwc we've seen uh month to month here taking on uh, another friend of the show john mcchesney who i actually he hasn't been on this show we should get him as well uh, another maybe yeah, maybe i'll score a couple interviews while i'm up there in clearfield it's a long trip i should just mm-hmm. like we should just like carpool and no, no, everybody's going to a separate door. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? <laughs> um, anyways, please subscribe to the Indie Mayhem show on uh, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and, of course, YouTube. Leave comments. Uh, share it with your friends. You can drop us a line at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0 uh, is the number for any comments. Anything you want us to check out, Indies, uh, or anything like that. So with that... That's all I can remember. Amen. At Amen 2, please. I'm at Sorgatron. Make sure you support some of the Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 